Hello and welcome to the Gamescast. Welcome to my Apex Online Racing League race in Canada. It's uh, round 7, uh, there's 14 turns, it's uh, 4.3 uh, kilometers long and 35 laps. It's uh, a very difficult track uh, to get clean laps as I'm sure you'll see in my race and uh, qualifying, well not so much qualifying but in the race you'll probably see a couple of corner cuts. Um, but anyway, uh, without any further ado, we're going to go on to my qualifying so we can see how I do. It's qualifying. It's the Canadian Grand Prix and here we go across the last two corners. Coming across the line, I get a 14 flat, but we're not going to worry about that because this is my fastest lap. Nicely clipping the first corner and the second using third gear so I can go flat out as soon as I've hit the apex pretty much. Going to slow motion now to show you how fine the margins are between cutting and not round this track. It's so difficult to get a fast clean lap round here. Up to uh, turns 5 and 6 you're unlikely to cut these two corners but it is possible but you're unlikely. You're more likely to cut the fifth corner. Coming up to 8 and 9 again very easy to cut for 8th and ninth corner. I cut the ninth corner ever so slightly. I'm not sure how much time that gave me. At the time, I didn't really realise I cut it. Coming up to the hairpin now, breaking nice and late, breaking too late, missing the apex. I'm wanting to get onto the throttle as soon as possible, up into a short shifting from second to third to try and minimise the wheel spin. I use very high gears around this track purely because the traction is so poor beat the last two corners, the hardest to get right and it also happens to be my worst sector of all the F1 tracks. I'm so slow I lose about half a second in this final sector. However, we're going to come across the line with a clean lap with a 113.5. Anyway, on to the standings. You can see Marco FD, my teammate, he gets pole with a 13.187. Thomas Irish HD a fraction behind, 0.07 seconds. Double D gets third place. Uh, he's only two tenths off Marco's time. I'm another one and a half tenth or one and a quarter tenths of Double D's time. And we've got Granu, Andre, Kluitsky, DH, Jep, Mini Black, and Race Fanatic, and Nick No Name in 12th. There are a few more drivers, have a. a unfortunately, uh, the standings uh, don't go down that far. But anyway. On to the race. It's race time. Oh, it's me. the Canadian Grand Prix. It's brought to you by me. <laughs> and uh, anyway, yeah, so... Canada, here we go. I'm in fourth hey, gut, but I get promoted up to third because of Thomas's disconnect at the end of qualifying. You don't see it or anything, but he does unfortunately disconnect. I believe some uh, his. I'm not sh quite sure what happened actually. I'm not sure what happened. But anyway, uh, we get a pretty decent start, breaking nice and late, trying to catch up to That's double D. However, that has compromised us. Using second now just to try and get a little bit of extra throttle. Uh, and being able to keep the revs high so we can catch up down this small straight however we're not able to we manage we end up cutting that corner massively and well it hasn't really gained us any time because we're just keep losing time we're already half a second down on double D Kluitsky's uh, put seven down on us however uh, you can just see we're catching up much faster now it's about two temps now and Kluitsky's just seven temps behind us so uh, yeah just wanting to keep it clean as we have done through this bit here alongside Double D now, we caught up half a second, uh, but you, you'll see this quite a lot, I end up, I pretty much, I lose half a second in the last sector, and I can gain half a second in the first and second sector, and this is compared to Double D, Klutsky has a very similar first sector, but he's faster than me no in the fine. last sector, but we're about equal in the middle sector, so, yeah, um, so yeah, this last sector I really struggle. Like you can already see, I've lost like half a second. Well, no more. Yeah, but no, about half a second. To Double D just on that last sector is basically that 
that little hairpin. I'm going to give uh, Klutsky room around the outside. You just, just see I sort of dodged off to the right as I uh, sort of almost pull in front of him. However, I'm not actually that close. It looks like I was very close, but I wasn't as close as it looks like, or at least wasn't on his screen anyway. Um, and keeping in third, like in qualifying, just to reduce any wheel spin, you can see the, the amount of time I gain through these corners. So to do with my setup, I actually use a quick setup, all but all to the right, but one. So my wings are four four, and uh, yeah, really does pay dividends in those uh, middle sectors. Uh, just being able to have four four wings. I am slow on the straight, but very very effective uh, in the mid first and middle sector mainly the middle sector but it helps a lot in the first as well anyway uh, again Klutzky uh, that's a half decent there for me Ooh, almost hit the wall of champions gonna be, that's a really difficult wall um, to hit D uh, really difficult that is just a really difficult wall because you end up hitting it most of the time but uh, not gonna phase about that, and I'm just showing you the sort of little sector times and stuff uh, between me and Double D. It's now 1.0 seconds, 1.8 to Klutsky behind. So let's see if I lose time here. Hopefully I don't, or don't lose too much. Ordinarily, like I said, I lose about half a second. Uh, let's see if that stays true here. Uh, yes, a bit more than half a second. And I catch up by six temps. And then I lose six temps. So, you know, it's very much... Me and Double D are very similarly paced around here. Uh, little did I know while catching up to Double D here that towards the end of the race I was going to have a, one of the best battles I've ever had in any F1 game and perhaps one of the best battles we've seen in AOR but anyway uh, we we'll come to that a little bit later on I've uh, lost uh, I'm only 1.4 now so from the lap before I have caught up a little bit lap 9 1.9 so I'm just skipping laps here and there again I'm using second gear actually around that corner it was pretty good uh, in standard I found it was okay you could uh, really push whereas in rich you couldn't push as much because I found the back end was sliding out all over the place in rich um, but yeah so in standard it's fine though so for race I wasn't really affected by sliding around or anything Klutsky's four seconds off off us now and uh, the gap from uh, Double D and Marco is about 1.3, 1.4. Uh, I believe that's what he said to me at the time during the race. It might. It looks like it's a little bit closer now. I don't think he's going to have DRS. So Marco, of course, being my teammate, it'd be good for him to win. In some ways, of course, I also want Double D to win because I want to minimise the uh, any sort of yeah any time lost. Uh, anyway, we come into the pits only on lap nine. Like I was saying, I want to minimise the amount of points Marco gains uh, to me. I forgot what the gap is at the moment, but uh, we'll come to that in a minute. We just had a two-week break from Monaco, so that's why you haven't seen uh, like an AOR League Race video in a, in a little while. But anyway, we're in uh, ninth place. Are we going to drop down to 10th? No, we're not. No, I thought we were. I, I thought I heard another car. And we've got Nick No Name. He is a, a brand new... Uh, he's a new driver. Uh, he's quite quick, actually. Uh, he only he didn't really do any practice with this track. Um, but he is a very quick driver. He used to be on the PlayStation 3 uh, platform. On the uh, equ uh, equivalent to Split 2 or GP2. I had five leagues. So they had like five splits and he was in the second one. So he's pretty quick. Um, this is on Apex Online Racing by the way, not on another league. Anyway, he's in sixth. His tires are absolutely dead. 
So his towers are dead. We sh this should be easy meat for us. We should almost get him off the exit of whenever we decide. Not here, as I slide a little bit. Uh, he seems to go to the left hand side expecting us to try and he must have expected us to get a better exit but unfortunately we don't and we have a small dive bomb at the inside and getting a decent exit well it was an okay exit but it doesn't matter Under his options are 11 laps old he can't do anything about our fresh primes uh, Double D is ahead of us and he has just overtaking Andre as you can see he's overtaking him on the left hand side with the DRS and he is just about beating him into the first corner and yes he does up the inside that looks like a fantastic move so it'll be interesting to see uh, what that looks like on his screen I haven't seen his POV yet now behind Andre 13 laps on the option tyres uh, he is trying a one stop I can tell you with hindsight so he is not trying he's just trying to be cautious with the tires basically so he's trying a one stop it is possible a one stop around here um i could do a one stop around here but i chose not to uh, because i didn't have raw speed to be able to do a one stop i'm not that fast around here and we aren't amazing we didn't just pull away from him there i'm amazed about that but we get the drs you should overtake him here the slipstream around here even though i'm running four four wings the slipstream and the DRS is just so powerful and as you can see sliding our way not cutting the corner at all which is very good it's so easy to cut those uh, hairpins uh, especially after the long DRS but I reckon uh, my 4-4 wings does mean we have very good braking and we brake too early and yep. um, Andre just climbs in the back of us I'm just being quite quiet here no He's just telling us that he didn't lose his front wing because I did ask him on TeamSpeak has he got any damage or anything from that and he doesn't. And just see the gap yeah, double D right. coming down. It's now 2.0 seconds. 1.2 now. We've gained so much time on double D. We're going to get the DRS as well catching him up ultra fast down here look how much we close in oh as we go into the pits we go invisible and we always hit him so like I said at the beginning little did I know that this pit stop was going to um, give us one of the best battles we will ever see in AOR and I honestly stand by that because this is an absolutely awesome battle uh, me and him were tweeting about a little bit yesterday but uh, I'm sure you'd much rather actually see the action rather than me talk about the action. I'm 16 oh, seconds behind Mark FD. Double D is I currently leading. Now, I did expect Marco to come in, and uh, Marco did pit, but he's actually pitted for prime tyres. He's not doing the standard. Uh, option prime option Let's he's doing the option sheets. option prime and double D is now to the pit 16 seconds a pit stop round here is about 16 seconds so providing Marco was pretty close we should come out fairly close to double D we've overtaken him into a pit we get second place out he basically you get a cut uh, you you're able to cut the first corner and he ends up retaking a second place from us and we are now in third position now I've left this lap in purely because I think it is this lap purely because this is one of the best laps I've ever done on the F1 2014 game uh, and we lose connection to Jep there anyway let's have a look at this lap I'm going to talk you through it pitching first uh, sector we are purple we're breaking nicely just 0.7 behind Again, hardly any wheel spin at all. From third up into fourth, up now up into sixth, not up into seventh, but down to third, allowing riding those curbs really nicely, not getting any type of cut. We've got the DRS, so we're guaranteed DRS braking at the right point here, nicely clipping the apex perfectly, using second gear to allow us to accelerate off. The hairpin double D gets a slightly better traction off the corner, however, now where I lose half a second is now going to be 
annihilated by the fact that we have DRS. I'm behind Double D. He hasn't compromised our speed at all as I go through the last two corners using DRS again up into 6th and 7th and we get a 1 minute 12.9 and that would have been enough for pole. I set a pole lap time in the race and listen to this reaction. Oh fuck. <laughs> so I got the double DRS and the slipstream where I norm would normally lose half a second. Anyway, are we going to be able to overtake Double D on this straight? But the idea behind my strategy is that you're going to be running out of laps. Okay, so behind Double D, we've got the DRS. We've got second place, almost guaranteed, breaking nicely, and he hits us, and we're almost Whoa. spinning. We're both spinning. Whoa. And I did think that was my fault. No, no, I was right, going to let him through. Going. And you can just hear him I telling us to carry on. I and we carry on. That, that's going to be removed. Double D, like he said on TeamSpeak, he did get a penalty. But it is going to get removed, so he now doesn't have a penalty. So, um, yeah, you can forget about the penalty you see at the yeah. end of the race. Was the lag involved there? All I need to do now is just pull away from Double D. However, he's not going to let us get away that easily. He's just four tenths behind us. And I can tell you now that Kluitsky is that little dot just coming up to corner uh, four now. Uh, no, corner six, sorry. And, uh, well, it's not six anymore. It's coming up to corner nine and ten, I believe. Um, anyway, he's that dot just at the DRS point now. And he is going to be closing down on me and Double D while we Whoa. battle. As I almost turn into Double D, but I don't. I'm getting a decent exit there. I look behind me and Double D has also got a good exit. He's going to have a, a slipstream DRS. Now this is how powerful it is. I can tell you Double D did this whole section in lean. That is how powerful DRS is around here. And he's going to get DRS again as I slide in that corner. Just losing so much time. It's probably a second or something now. And it is, it's one second, 0.962, I wasn't too far off. Yeah, I know. And Klupski's just 2.7 behind us. Uh, we cut that corner quite considerably there. You did hear me only for a fraction, but I did lift off a little bit. And already we catch up to Double D by one second. So I'm not sure. updated on his gap. I'm not sure how his... Um, uh, yeah, Double D keep, said keep me updated on his gap. That's to Kluitsky, it's 2.8. So uh, he is also worried about uh, Kluitsky's, uh, Kluitsky potentially getting a podium or taking second place and finishing ahead of both of us. Marco's pretty much won this race. However, me and Double D have still got unfinished business to do for the last six laps. I'm up into Rich now, and you can just see the speed of the DRS, it's just unbelievable. And this is with 4 4 wings, and Double D was running uh, 2 1 wings. So you can see. Uh, oh, as I almost get Double D, and we're going neck and neck. I got better traction get somehow. I get the undercut, like he said. I've got DRS, I'm on the inside of this corner. I break slightly earlier, wanting to get a better apex, and I do, and I get a much neater line through this corner. I should be able to have them. Down to corner 3 and 4. I'm going to have a go around the outside of corner 3, no I'm not, I back out of it and I have to cut that corner because I wasn't able to make the time up again and Kluitsky is again, uh, he's fallen off the pace a little bit now actually but he was just 0.7 behind and he's now 2.7 However me and Double D are still battling now, did skip a few laps uh, I don't know what happened to Kluitsky. Um He said he didn't do much practice for this race either. So I can only assume that. And that is a fantastic overtake around the outside of Double D into uh, yeah, uh, turn 13 and 14. So, it better be recording. And Double D is uh, not getting it nicely turned in, keeping it in third, keep making sure I keep the traction and the tyre wear. My tyre wear around this track is very good. I do get very nice tyre wear. No idea where you are. Double D's up the inside, and wow, well, that's moved done really. As uh, we approach lap 
33, am I able to, like, maintain the lead almost, if you like, to double D? Am I able to do that? I'm not pushing 100%. I'm only really pushing about 90% really. So I could, I've got an extra 10% in reserve if I need to be. I, I push 100% in the first set and second sector. Then I just let go in this third sector, sort of knowing I'm going to get DRS. And as you can see, just letting off the throttle only for a second as I'm thinking, uh, is my back end going to go? Because I've had it so many times, I've just spun out into that wall. So with pretty worn tyres, I don't want to just spin out again. I need to be really cautious. But so I do let go of the throttle around uh, a couple of the corners. And uh, me and Double D are still super close. This is my uh, second to last very good chance of getting... Uh, no, third to last very good chance of getting Double D. Am I going to take him? I'm going to give it a go, but I don't oh, quite have the speed. Back. And I do have to, uh, to cut that corner in order to... You know, you can see my tower. It's pretty bad, actually. It's uh, fairly yellow. I do have to cut that corner, but I almost lose a back end. And, well, almost crash into the wall of champions. I'm lucky I didn't there. Anyway. Again, right on the tail of Double D. Both of us taking that corner pretty nicely. Now, this is why I really catch up to everyone. I'm, I am the fastest in these first two sectors, but I do lose half a second of the last sector. That is where I lose all my time. It is very frustrating, and it was frustrating me an awful lot as I sort of try to uh, move around the outside of Double D, and I'm almost pushing him through these last... Uh, into the last sector. Breaking at a good point. Double D's taking the defensive line. I can't quite get it turned in enough, and I'm now right behind Double D. I'm going to get the DRS. Am I going to go to the left or to the right? Double D looks like he's trying to cover up the, Are you alongside cover off the left. And I'm alongside okay. Double D. Around the outside, possibly into these last two corners. And again, I can't quite do it. I'm going to have one. I have two more good attempts of getting Double D around this track. There are so many overtaking uh, places on this track. But can I overtake Double D? One. And his tyres are gone. Our tyres, as you can see, are okay. And again, cutting that corner a little bit okay. is not severe at all. And uh, me and uh, I'm getting a really good line through there and through here. I'm getting good exit as well. That means I'm going to have double D round the outside potentially. And his tyres are gone. My tyres aren't. And oh, I hit the back of Double D, he goes across, I don't overtake him, I do let off through gas an okay. awful lot there, just to make sure that I don't overtake him, because that would have been an illegal overtake, I'm pretty sure. Anyway, this is my last chance. Oh, it's a really poor exit, I've lost it. I'm going to get the DRS, but I've lost it, surely. I can't get Double D now. The slipstream. Doesn't matter what happens, surely I can't. Overtake double D. It's an almost impossibility. Oh, and that's it. That's how it's done. Me and double D is not going to see me on top. But that was a fantastic race, nonetheless. Anyway, we're going to go on to uh, the standings, and you can see Marco FD winning. Uh, again, once again, a Mercedes driver wins uh, almost every, that is almost every single race, but two. So, out of seven races, a Mercedes driver has only not won two races, which is pretty good. Uh, that does mean that he has one extra win than me now, which is uh, not a nice fact <laughs> for me. Sorry, Marco. <laughs> um, in second place, we have Double D. Uh, he only finished about two seconds ahead of me. In third place, we have me finishing 16 seconds behind Marco. An extra almost 10 seconds behind, uh, about eight seconds behind me and Double D. We have Kluitsky. Amazingly, I really did think he was going to catch up to us. Uh, in uh, fifth, we have DH. 
sixth, we have Andre, who did do a one stop, and that's pretty respectable. He made the one stop work, and he had Mini Black and Nick No Name and Race Fanatic uh, hunting him down towards the end. Also had Granu. Uh, not sure what happened to Granu there. Uh, he he got lapped, so uh, he he wasn't motivated. He did say after the race, but he did get half decent time, I guess. Well, he got a 15-1, which is good out of a couple of drivers ahead of him. And uh, Nick No Name, the new driver, he showed some good pace, some good split one pace, but uh, no major surprises from the front. Burkhoff and Ryan, Ryan's uh, got a bowler, so uh, <laughs> no he hasn't. Ryan's not feeling very well, or he wasn't feeling well at the time of this race. And Burkhoff uh, wasn't able to attend, and Thomas disconnected, so did Jep, he also uh, disconnected Jep. I call him Jep because I can't say his name, so that's why I'm calling him Jep. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you for the next race in Austria. Goodbye.